Perspectives on Human Sexual Behavior. Who is in control of sexual value construction? Sexuality refers to the erotic desires and sexual practices, as well as sexual orientation. Bronislaw Malinowski, The Sexual Life of Savages in 1929. Shorebrand Islands, he studied there and researched from 1914 to 1918. He was concerned how readers uh, took his work out of context. My aim in this book was to show that from whichever side you approach it, the problem of sex, family, and kinship presents an organic unity which cannot be disrupted, that these things go together and they are attached to the economy. Um, a. Werner also looked at the Trobrand Islands. He was there in 1988, some 70 years later. By the time children are seven or eight, they're playing erotic games. Four or five years later, they, presume, they pursue sexual partners. Sexuality and other, other, other cultural ideas um, are very different than ours. And it doesn't mean ours are wrong or theirs are wrong. It means that humans can express themselves in any number of ways. Sexual attraction and behavior. There are no universal standards of sexual attractiveness. Europeans concentrate on female bodies and male status. The Chukchi, uh, Maricopa, prefer a plump build. The Dubuans and the Maasai prefer a slim body. Sexual play varies considerably across cultures well, uh, culture as well. Genital stimulation is widespread among human groups. Sexual prohibitions, again, change from culture to culture. Among the Mabuti pygmies, sex can take place during menstruation, pregnancy, or lactation. They're very open to it. The Chinese, however, consider women to be polluting during menses and avoid intercourse at this time. Extramarital sex is fairly common across cultures. It is ignored as long as affairs are carried out with discretion. Now, we talked about, we, we heard the young girls of the Maasai talk about that with their boyfriends. We heard Nisa talk about that um, as her husband complained of all the boys she slept with. <laughs> and again, it's not uncommon. In egalitarian societies that don't have the idea of ownership, it's not as offensive to the self um, if something like that happens. I'm not saying it doesn't have an effect, but when you compound that with, look what you've done to me, somebody who is doing what they want aren't doing something to you, they're living their life. Speaking of living a life, the English Pagan Society is in Ireland, or at least it's an island um, off of Ireland. Culturally patterned sexual uh, uh, repression. That's the word I was looking for. They're Irish Catholic. Refusing intercourse is a mortal sin. They're Gaelic speaking. They're somewhat um, isolated from Ireland on the Aran Island. And it's a fishing and farming community. Absence of sexual foreplay. Brief and sexual activity weakens. Uh, I'm sorry. Belief that sexual activity weakens men. Absence of premarital sex. High percentage of celibate males. An extraordinary late age of marriage. Polynesia. Adolescent boys are given sexual instruction and experience with a woman in the village. Practically every girl and boy has had intercourse before marriage. Female virginity male celibacy and homosexuality are practically unknown. Andalusia and the sexual control of women. Women are seen as the devil. Women have lustful appetites that lead men into temptation. Women possess goodness only as mothers. Husbands fear that women drive them to an early death by demands for sex. And while that seems kind of silly, at least to me, it might to you too, this is not uncommon across the planet in different cultures that men look at it, sex as draining their masculinity, draining their life. I'm not sure why. 
Sexual orientation. Labels given to patterns of sexual attraction. Heterosexual. Hetero is the other. Homosexual. Same. Homo. And bisexual. Both or all. Now, sexuality. The diversity in our sexuality is our nature. It is what we've evolved to be. These kind of uh, labels are then culturally determined by what the value is. So, in a patriarchal society, an extremely patriarchal society, homosexuality would be forbidden. Bisexuality would be forbidden because it flies in the face of male dominance. Male dominance is not a truth. It is not a fact of life, a fact of nature. It is a cultural dynamic that is constructed. And anything that is constructed on fantasy is very uh, fragile, like uh, men's masculinity. Ford and Beach, 1951, comparative study of sexual behavior from 75 societies reported 64% um, found homosexuality normal. However, homosexual activities seem to be absent or carried out in secret. And some, of, some other societies strongly disapprove with homosexual behavior. Again, patriarchy tends to um, exclude that because the males of homosexuals are seen to act as females, perceived to act as that, and that flies in the front of male dominance. Beyond male and female, India is one of the societies where cultural support is given to individuals who bridge the difference between male and female. Also, Polynesia, Saudi Arabia has areas, uh, the two spirits of Native American tribes, and the Katoi of Thailand, the Hijras of India. Hijras consider the operation a rebirth. It is carried out as an act of devotion to the Hindu mother goddess, and that is the sexual transformation, the reassignment of male to female. In India, gods are often both male and female, both constructive and destructive. So, uh, the hedras take on the aspect of a goddess. After the operation, hedras are believed to incorporate the goddess powers of procreation. And because of that, their presence is required at weddings and at birth of children. Now, this was accepted prior to British contact colonialism and occupation. At that point, so many things became illegal, that you'll see in the film after this presentation. Um, now, it's very difficult. Two spirits. Native American tradition accepts uh, the existence of a third gender and embraces aspect of male and female. Such people were called Berdachi by Europeans, but this term is considered by many to be disrespectful. And you could say it was because of the uh, Europeans' uh, view. In the West, most children or adults who exhibit cross-gender behavior are usually subject to criticisms or social rejection. Native American traditions not only accept such persons, considered two-spirit, but even allow them to take highly respected roles as shamans and priests. The reason being that they reflect the whole of the society. They reflect both the masculine and the feminine. It's a very different way to look at it. Circumcision. Removing of the foreskin covering the clitoris or the loose skin covering the head of the penis. Kristen Bell did research motivated by the strong reaction of female circum to, to female circumcision she saw on her campus. She found that medical and common sense con common sense constructions of the human body are not divorced from cultural benefits. In, cultural that, in a cultures that practice female circumcision, like male circumcision, ensures job, daughters will be sought after as desirable marriage partners. In fact, until the female is circumcised, she's not considered a woman and not considered eligible for marriage. While most North Americans consider the operation mutilation, and there are different three different categories. I would say the third might be considered mutilation. Um, 
maybe all three are. While at the same time we practice male circumcision, withdrawing little attention to it in the West. Gender, gender roles, and issue of human sexuality are, interest, are of interest to people everywhere. Gender is culturally assigned role given to individuals identified as male, female, or other. Most societies recognize two genders, whereas some recognize a third and sometimes a fourth gender. Sexual orientation and sexuality are best viewed and understood within cultural context. Okay, I'm going to post the film, Transgender People, Transgender Community, separate. Please watch it.